The recent pandemic has changed everyone's life in both good and bad ways. I don't have to describe to you how badly it impacts the economy worldwide, causes hundreds of thousands of lives and counting, changes the way we interact with each other forever. On the other hand, this pandemic presents a crisis that could create opportunities. Opportunities to stir up new ideas and develop novel technologies to make our world safer. An American politician, Rahim Emanuel, once said, "You never let a serious crisis go to waste." And what I mean by that is an opportunity to do things you think you could not do before. In recent months, you must have overwhined with all sorts of UV-like sanitizers on social media. From those used for phones and credit cards to those used for furniture and toilet seats, almost all of them have claimed that their device can kill up to 99% of bacteria and viruses. This pandemic crisis has certainly inspired companies to push sanitizing devices out to the market in a rush, due to their huge demand. It has also inspired us to create this video. But are they really effective? Eliminating the new virus, can this UEC technology be the latest game changer? UV light sanitizers rely on the UV light that sits within the UEC spectrum as the source of medium to carry out sanitization. UVC typically covers a wavelength between 200 and 280 nanometers in the electromagnetic spectrum. Due to its high quantum energy, it can disrupt the DNAs of bacteria and viruses given sufficient intensity and exposure time. Most commercially available UV light sanitizers are made of plastics and lack of a reflective surface to reflect the UV light to reach every single corner of the object to be sanitized. Also, none of them have a raised platform inside the compartment, so the bottom side of the object cannot be exposed to the UV light. These sanitizers can cost from over fifty to hundreds of dollars. In this video, we are going to construct a better and more cost-effective UV light sanitizer. To begin the building process, we find a box and cover the interior with aluminum foil. If your box is made of metal and the interior is shiny, you may skip this part. We then lay out the UVC LEDs and determine how far apart they need to be placed inside the box. Now gather some electrical wires.
We need to cut 8 pieces of wires with each 4 having the same length. How long they are depends on the size and the shape of your box. Since my box is more like a square, it doesn't matter which size I choose to mount the LEDs. The rule of thumb is that the closer the LEDs are to the object you want to sanitize, the higher light intensity the object receives, thus more effective the sanitizing process functions. Keep in mind that each UVC LED we have, according to the manufacturer, has a view angle of 120 degrees. To optimize the total coverage of UV light on the object you want to sanitize, you have to determine the LED separation distance denoted by D here. The rule of thumb is that the wider your object, the longer the separation distance you will need, and vice versa. And when you mount the LEDs height-wise, make sure they are halfway between the top and bottom of the box, so the UV light can get to both top and bottom of the object you want to sanitize. If your box is slender, like a rectangle, you may want to mount the LEDs on the longer sides of the box so they are opposed to each other with shorter distance. This will again increase the effectiveness of the sanitizing process. Carefully separate the wires into groups of two. We are going to construct a parallel circuit to facilitate these LEDs. In this circuit, we have a 9 volt power supply, a limit switch, and 4 UEC LEDs. We use a parallel circuit here because we want to increase the amount of current flow in the circuit. With the size of wires that we have, a single path in the series circuit will not light up the LEDs. Now we use a utility knife or wire stripper to cut out the wire installation. Twist the stranded copper wires to form a tapered end. Insert it to the top left corner through hole of the LED breakout board from the bottom. The middle through hole on each side of the breakout board is the power inlet, with the positive side on the left and the negative side on the right. After the wire is inserted into the top left corner through hole, bend it 90 degrees downward so it can touch the middle through hole on the breakout board. Use a soldering iron to solder the wire to the middle through hole. Do the same for the wire that goes into the bottom left through hole of the breakout board. Make sure the length of this wire is the same as the LED separation distance we talked about 2 minutes ago. Now we just finished soldering the first LED. Repeat the same procedure for the second LED that will sit on the same side adjacent to the first one. Now we have the left side of the parallel circuit done. Carry on and finish the other side of the parallel circuit. For the left circuit, trim the wire on the positive side of the breakout board. We will solder the end of it to the positive terminal of the 9V power barrel jack. For the circuit on the right, trim the wire on the negative side of the breakout board. We will solder the end of it to the terminal of the limit switch.
The center pin of the 9V power barrel jack here connects to the positive terminal at the back. We will solder the trimmed wire of the left circuit to this positive terminal. We will then solder the untrimmed wire of the circuit on the right to this same positive terminal. Now we have taken care of the positive paths of the circuit. Next, we will focus on to the return paths of the circuit. Cut a piece of wire. Connect one end to the negative terminal of the 9 volt power jack and the other end to the normally open terminal of the limit switch. Find the remaining unconnected wire on each side of the parallel circuit. These two wires are connected to the negative terminals of the LED breaker board. Combine the ends together and solder them to the common terminal of the limit switch. Cut another piece of wire. Solder one end to the normally open terminal of the limit switch and the other end to the negative terminal of the 9V power jack. We should now have the entire circuit completed. In choosing the type of power source for the device, one may have many options. For the consistent power input, you may want to choose a wall adapter. For the sake of convenience, one may want to choose a battery source. If your box is big enough, you may choose to put the battery holder inside instead of leaving it out as an external power source. Other types of small size battery connectors, like the one here, is also available if you want to further reduce the size of the internal battery compartment. To test the circuit to see if it is functional and has the required power output, we connect a 9 volt battery source to the power jack. Then press and hold down the lever of the limit switch to see if the LEDs can be lit up. Then we use a multimeter to measure the voltage drop across each LED while the circuit is closed. As you can see, all four LEDs registered a voltage drop of 5.92 volts. Next, we use the multimeter to measure the total current consumed by the four LEDs. We have a total current draw of 0.18 Ampere, which is about 0.045 Ampere per LED. So the power consumption of each LED is equivalent to 0.27 Watt 
which is just above the nominal power output of a quarter watt defined by the manufacturer. We'll now look at how to install this LED bundle inside the box. Cut a piece of the electrical tape with the size of just bigger than the LED breakout board. This piece of tape will be attached to the back of the breakout board to prevent any short circuit that may happen when the board is mounted onto the metal surface of the box inside. Make sure the entire breakout board and the solder joints are covered that no conductors are exposed. Repeat this procedure for the other three breakout boards. Cut a piece of the double-sided foam tape. Peel off the vinyl cover and stick the foam tape onto the back side of the limit switch. Make sure nothing box the switch when the switch lever is pressed. Now lay out the entire hardware bundle inside the box and make the shape of the wires according to your desired component spacings. To give better cable management and overall presentation, we use the electrical tape to wrap around all wires to create a unit body bundle. Take the front of each LED breakout board with a piece of electrical tape similar to the one taped to the back. Use a cutter to cut out a window so the LED is exposed. Repeat this step for the other LEDs. Cut another piece of the double-sided form tape. Peel off the vinyl cover on one side and stick the form onto the bottom of the 9V power barrel jack. With the other vinyl cover still attached on the other side of the form, place the power jack to the location where you want to affix it to. Use a pencil to mark the location of the jack inside the box. Measure the center pin location of the jack away from its perimeter. Mark down the center pin location on the box. Use a 7mm drill bit to make a hole for the power plug that goes into the jack. Use a small file to file away any sharp edges on the hole. Peel off the remaining vinyl cover on the bottom side of the jack and stick it to the bottom of the box adjacent to the hole you just made.
Try to insert the power plug into the jack to see if everything fits. Make adjustment if not. Now peel off the remaining vinyl cover on the back of the limit switch and stick it to the back wall of the box. For added security, you can also use a couple screws to fasten the limit switch in place. Make sure the lever of the switch is above the edge of the wall so when the lid is closed, the switch is triggered. Cut out a piece of aluminum foil tape that covers the LEDs and the wire bundle on one side. Use the tape to affix the wires and the LEDs to your desired locations. Do this for all sides of the box. Pull out a piece of paper and fold it in half. Tape the entire half sheet of the paper with the aluminum foil tape. We'll use this to make the raised platform. Cut out the excessive portion according to the size of your box. Fold the paper along the line where the edges of the tape meet. Draw a line on each folding line. Use about one third the height of your box as the line spacing. Draw two more lines above each folding line. Carefully fold the paper using the lines drawn. and you will now have this waste platform. Paste the platform inside the box. Use the aluminum foil tape to affix it in such a way that it is not blocking the LEDs.
secure both front and back of the platform with the tape. Lastly, we want to make an indicator to alert the user when the device is on. So we are going to drill a little hole on the front wall of the box. A drill bit size of 1 8 of an inch will do the job. Now we want to play a little trick with the UV light. We are going to use a small piece of white paper to harass a blue light in the invisible UV light. We stick a small piece of white paper on the flange of the waste platform right behind the small hole we drilled. So when the device is on, we should see a blue light just like that of a blue LED emitting from the hole. But in this case, we don't even need an LED. Pretty cool, isn't it? Now you can put your personal belongings like your phone into the sanitizer. I'll leave it in there for at least 5 minutes for the UVC light to do its job. When everything's all done, you realize it takes not even 2 hours to build your own UV light sanitizer from scratch and it has already finished its very first sanitizing job. To show whether the UVC light is actually shining on the phone, I have again used pieces of white paper to make the UV light visible. Now you see it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. We will have more DIY projects coming soon.